Ruth, uh, when you are um, measuring, do you uh, do an extra, like for the phone, extra, a couple of stitches? Yes, I'm going to make an extra couple of stitches. A little bit. Oh, my phone just started ringing. Isn't that strange? <laughs> and it was a robo call, of course. I can't so, stand um, them. Yeah, so I much fun. So, um, I, the, these amount of chains are just the width of the phone, but I want to make it a little bit wider. You never know what else I want to put into my little bag, right? Maybe a mask or some change or some money. So I'm just going to make um, a few more chain. And it's easier, easier if I just show you the width like this. That's pretty good. Got it. Let's see. So if I have my um, phone here, I've got a few extra chain here. And then I'm going to do an extra one because we always skip the first chain. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to count how many um, chains I have as well. So I have... Um, so if we're counting these uh, little loops on top, that's what we count to sort of recognize our chain. And this is the front of the chain and this is the back. And I see Michelle, Michelle raised her hand. So, yeah, ask away if you have a question, Michelle. So I think I have 13 chain and I'm going to make an extra one, two, four, six, eight, eight. I cannot hear. Okay, so I've got 14 chain here. Yeah, Michelle, if you have a question, just um, put it in we the We can hear you, Michelle. Yeah, we can't hear you. Let me get a scrap piece of paper. So, Huda, I'm just going to um, do a little diagram of what we're actually doing today so that you know what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So, So say this is our row of chain that we're doing. Yeah. What we're going to do is make a series of stitches into each of the chain. So we're basically going to skip that first chain and we're going to make a single crochet stitch into each one of those chain. And when we get to the last one, we're going to do a couple of extra stitches. This is the only time we're going to do this. So we're going to put a couple of extra stitches in that last stitch. And then after that, we're actually going to turn around in a circle and come back and put stitches into the other side of those chain. So that we end up actually making like a little tiny long oval shape. So what we're actually doing, we've made our chain, we're going to build on one side of that chain, do some extra stitches, turn the corner and build stitches on the back of those chain. So we're working stitches into both sides of the chain and we'll end up sort of like with a longish oval shape of stitches. And that's what's going to help us build this bag. If that makes sense. Thanks. 
Oh, I think I will just sort of spin around into my um, demonstration mode here. Excuse me for a moment. Okay, so what we have now, this is our row of chain. I think I said I had 14. So we're going to skip the very first chain here. And just, just speak up if you need me to go over anything again. We're going to work into each one of these chains. Each one of these chains is described by a little loop at the top. And we're going to stick our crochet hook underneath each of those hoops and make a stitch. So I'm actually, I can't go into the first chain because it's active. So I'm going to go into the next chain and put in my hook, grab my yarn, which is at the back, and pull that loop through the chain. And I now have two loops on my hook and we're going to finish the stitch by coming over and through the two loops. And so this is our single crochet stitch in our first chain right there. Um, so Huda, do you know how to build a single crochet stitch? Yeah, I did it and, uh, and, and I'm following. But okay. the thing is that it's, it doesn't look like yours. That's okay. We'll figure this out. We're just uh, practicing, getting familiar with this again. Yeah. And it, it might also just be the nature of Zoom and the way we're sort of looking at things and the color of your yarn and things like that. Um, so I'm going to go along and under each one of those loops, I'm going to put in my hook and make a, a single crochet. So I'm going to just continue to do that. So into the next stitch, pull up my loop. So you can see here, there's a loop of yarn that's been pulled up through that chain. And we're not going to do a slip stitch. So we're not putting that loop through the other loop. That is not a single crochet. Uh, the thing to remember about the single crochet is that once you get the two loops on your hook, you need to come around the hook and put a new piece of yarn through those two loops and that completes the stitch. If you um, build this up using slip stitches, you're going to have a terrible time trying to work into those stitches again because slip, st slip stitches are used to attach things to each other and to finish things off. Then they don't really work that well in terms of um, working stitches that you work back into. So again, I'm gonna go into the next chain stitch, grab my yarn with my hook, pull up the loop. Again, we're not going to put that loop through the loop on the stitch, on the hook. We're not going to do that. Once we have those two loops on our hook we're going to come over the hook with our yarn and put this yarn through the two loops here that's the proper way to finish off the single crochet so the single crochet looks if we turn the stitch to the side it looks like there's got two bars or two loops underneath the um the loop on our hook so I'm just going to go into the next stitch, pull up my loop, loop over and through the two loops. Into the next stitch, pull up my loop over and through the two loops. 
into the next stitch, next chain, <laughs> pull up my loop over with the yarn that is actually called a yarn over, which is abbreviated as a Y O in a pattern, yarn over, yarn over. And then we're going to pull that yarn through the two loops. So you see here the uh, single crochet stitch has a cute little structure. It's got two pieces here that come down and um, a horizontal loop across the top. And if we look at the top of the single crochet, you can easily see all these pretty sort of interconnecting chains into each other. And that makes it so much easier to work into when we come around to building up our rows of stitches again. So I'm still continuing with this row, pulling up my loop over through two, through the two loops into the next chain, pull up the loop over through the two loops. So I'm just going to get down to the end of my row here. So I have two stitches left. The first chain I made in the second chain. So I'm just going to go into that second last chain. So here I have the last chain that I'm going to work into. And into this last chain, I'm going to make three single crochet. And that will actually help us to build enough stitches to get around to the other side of the chain that we're going to work into. Because as I said, we're trying to build up an oval of stitches. So into this last stitch, I'm gonna build my first single crochet over through the two loops. I'm gonna go into that same stitch again and build a second single crochet and for a third time into the same chain for the third time I'm going to build my third single crochet. So if we look here we have one two three stitches into that single crochet and what that what that what that does is that it helps to push us around to this other side of the chain here. So if we naturally let the fabric sort of turn us around, we're going to work on the other side of these chains to finish off this round. So does that make sense? Yeah. I'm doing it slow, so. <laughs> yeah, and if you want me to uh, take this out and do it again, I'm happy to do that. Oh, no, no, that's okay. Trying to catch up. I think you know the texture of my yarn. You know, oh, it's not. It's not very smooth. Yeah, no. I mean, the woman was telling me that this is a good one. So, mm. so far I've done. It doesn't look like yours. <laughs> Oh, I think I just saw Gavin's row of chain. Gavin, let me see yours. <laughs> <laughs> let me just spin around for a second so I can have a look. Yeah, let me see that again. Uh, so let's let's take it back to the the original, right? Um, okay. Let's do it. So I'm, this is where I'm still at. I won't lie. I'll be honest. So we hold it like this, the pinch, right? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> hold what on. Happened? My battery. Okay, yeah, battery's fine. Um, hold it like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then put that, the string under here, hold it like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then, see, the problem I'm having is I'm trying to get the string to attach on the hook, right? Yeah. So... Yeah. Hold it like this. I know. <laughs> I am here for administrative purposes only. Uh, <laughs> it gets a good experience. Uh, so, yeah, that's the challenge. So, yeah, so let's see if I can help you a little bit yeah. like, with that. Thank so you. We've got our loop. Mm -hmm. we've got our hook through here. Yep. 
so let's see. Let me put some more of that. So we want to be holding the yarn, just grasping the yarn like this, so that we've got a firm grip on it. Mm -hmm. And with this hand, you want to be uh, pinching this chain here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pinch the chain. Yeah. If your yarn is taut enough, when you bring it around, it should stay on the hook. So bring it if, around. If you let go of your chain, it's going to spin around. Yep. It's, it's, it's one of those horrible things that um, <laughs> is tricky to start, but once you start. I know. <laughs> it's always a little tricky to, to get that first chain. So yep. we want to hold down our chain, bring our yarn over, and while we're still gripping our yarn, release your forefinger and your thumb so that you can now pinch with the hand that's holding the yarn. Yep. And, and in this way, the yarn is sort of taut on the hook or tight on the hook. Well, you, you're watching me backwards, so this is okay. A, a little trick. Like this, then. Okay. Yeah, let me just spin around again so that I can show you. Okay. So we've got our, our loop on our hook, and we're holding the yarn like this. Mm -hmm. But just just with your last three fingers, keep your thumb and your forefinger like a lobster pincher, like yep. three, three. And while you're gripping the yarn with this hook, this finger over here is holding that chain down to stay yep. in place. Okay. And so with these first two fingers here, we're going to wrap our yarn over here. We're not going to let go of anything. Yep. So we're still being held here. And you're going to grab your two fingers here and grab that chain there so that the yarn is taut on the hook and you mm -hmm. can turn your hook and pull that yarn through the loop. Oh! I, I'm i guessing that that was a yelp of... Who did it? I'm, <laughs> maybe. Okay, I'm going to try it one more time. Yeah, so we'll try to what get... What is it about this? This is like the most... <laughs> okay. So we're going okay. to start again. The, I mean, as, as, as horrible as it is to start this stuff, the good news is, is that it's extremely repetitive. Yeah. So we're going to do that whole thing again. So we're going to grab our yarn with our fingers, keep these fingers free. Yep. Pinch the top of this chain until we have the yarn placed over the hook. Mm -hmm. like this yep. and then we're going to take these two fingers over here we're going to grab our work so it doesn't yep. spin around and then we're going to turn our hook and bring that yarn through the loop okay and then and that's your chain <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> okay like that. Over, over pinch. You want to make sure that there's a little bit of room underneath the loop on your hook. That'll mm -hmm. help you when you turn your, you have to, if you don't turn your hook, you're just going to be slamming into that. Yeah, loop, that's right? what's happening. So you've got to turn your hook a little bit to get through the loop on your hook. Oh. You did another one? And then it's just a matter of repetition. We're grabbing our yarn, stopping our chain from flipping around, grabbing our thumb and forefinger, putting the yarn around the hook, using those same two fingers to pinch our work while we're still holding the yarn. And it's almost like you also want to like pull this down a little bit because so, we've got to create enough space under that loop on the hook. The yarn is caught on the hook 
So to get it through, you've got to turn the hook, turn it down so it goes into the loop on your hook and that creates your chain. So Huda, how are you going? Where are you up to? I'm just watching and then uh, slowly I'm connecting these, <laughs> whatever I'm doing. <laughs> So we're making it's, chain stitches here. Are you still building your chain stitches? Yeah, I'm still building my chain. See? Oh, okay. Oh, let me – no, hold on. Let me spin around so I can see you better. Um, a little bit closer. Oh, okay. So are you, are you making the single crochet or you're still building the chain? It looks more complicated than chain. Yes, it, it, I'm, I'm doing like following the second chain, connecting. Are you building this single crochet? The, yeah. Okay. This is like my second uh, turn. Oh, you know, you're, I'm on, you're, oh, you're on the other side of the chain now? Yeah. Okay, great. So you're, so you're working on the other side of yes, the chain. Yes, but yours look prettier. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, you know, it's okay. Once once you get your feet wet and get back into this again, yours will be pretty as well. Yeah, so I'm just going to try and catch up with you as well while um, Gavin is um, getting used to making his train. Right, so I've come around the other side. I'm going to work the single crochet on the other side of the other single crochet. So I'm still working into the chain stitches. It's just on the opposite side of them. So it's almost like... Um, I'm going right in there on the opposite. And it's almost like I'm going underneath um, two strands of yarn. There's a, there's a little gap there that I'm going to put my hook in to make my single crochet. And it's right on the opposite side of the other single crochet, right in there. So we're still working underneath these sort of, the chain now looks sort of like a horizontal. And we're gonna go underneath two of those strands, pick up our yarn. You can see maybe if I've stretched it apart a little bit, you can see this single crochet that is on one side of the chain. And now we're building on the other side of the chain. And again, it's very important with the single crochet. Once you have your two loops on your hook, that you come over with your yarn and pull that through the two loops. That's the correct single crochet. So right here, you can see, see where that single crochet is here. So I'm gonna put my hook right through there. Split this apart so you can see. That's the other single crochet. So we're putting one right opposite that on the other side. And again, I'm going, it's almost like I'm going underneath these two horizontal pieces here, which represent the other side of the chain, pulling up my loop, two loops on the hook, and then we're gonna come over and through the two loops. Uh, once we actually get through this first round, things will get a little bit easier. We're just establishing the beginning of the bag. Once we have this round established, things um, will get a little bit easier as well. So I'm going to come under here on the other side of that single crochet over with the yarn and through the two loops into the next chain space, grab the yarn, 
come over with the yarn and through the two loops. So that's your single crochet. So I'm almost at the end of this round. So this is called a round per se, because we will be working in like long circles. It's not a row. A row is when you go backwards and forwards, but this is formally called a round because we're going around in a circle. So going into the next chain, over with the yarn and then through the two loops. So I've, um, I'm almost at the end here. I'll just do the next stitch. So we're back to here. The last chain right here already has one single crochet in it. We're going to put two more stitches oh, okay. into that hole there so that we basically have like three stitches at the end of at each end of our chain three stitches at each end of our chain. So this, this chain already has one single crochet in it. So I'm just gonna put two more in there. So one and then two. So one, two, and then three is right there. And you've actually completed like the first round of this bag. So you can see here, this is how uh, it ends up looking like a small but long oval shape, uh, similar to this diagram here, where we have our chain stitches and all around on both sides of the chain, we have a single crochet on each side of the chain and at each end of the chain, we have three single crochet. This is the only time where you have to put three stitches at the end of the chains, the only time. From now on, the good news is, is that we are just gonna keep working one stitch into every stitch. So there's no more increasing, decreasing, no shaping. All we are going to do is put one stitch into every stitch. So now we're going to be building our single crochet stitch on top of and into each single crochet stitch. We don't even have to do anything um, fancy at the start of the next round. Usually what I like to do um, to keep track of where I am, it's, it's sort of nice to know when you've completed a round and it can, one, one once our bag starts to build up, sometimes it's difficult to actually tell which side of the bag is the beginning and the end of the round. So what I like to do is sort of grab a scrap piece of yarn. And at the start of the next round, all we have to do is place the piece of yarn like this in between the loop on your crochet hook and the stitch just you don't have to knot it or anything it just has to lie like this around the stitch and you're just going to continue working and we'll just leave this piece of scrap yarn here just so that you know when you've completed around because believe me once you build up your bag it'll be hard to tell which side is which so to work into our single crochet stitches. If we look at the top of our single crochet stitches, you can see that there's these little loops that come under each other. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our hook under both of those bars as they're called that are part of the one stitch. So all of this little loop shape here is actually part of one stitch. So we're going to put our hook under there to make sure that we're building our stitches on top of 
previous stitches. So again, I'm going to get my hook, maybe use my finger to help her under the first one. I'm going to go under both bars of the single crochet. And we're just going to do exactly what we did on the chain. We're just going to grab our yarn, pull up a loop, and then finish it off with a yarn over and through the two loops. You can see here that scrap piece of yarn is just sort of hanging and it's captured. It'll be captured at this side of the work here. And uh, that's pretty much all we're gonna do from now on is uh, build our single crochet on top of one another. I've already built my stitch under here. So I'm going to go in the next stitch. And it's easier if you look at the top of your work. We're going to go under the two bars, under the top of the next stitch, pull our loop up, and then over and through uh, two loops. It's also a little bit of a clue um, to figure out where to put your hook. See how there's a, a little tiny circle there, sort of like a little hole? right there, that's actually where you want to put your hook through. And if you put your hook through that little hole, it will actually lead you to come under the two pieces of yarn that the, the complete loop that makes up that stitch. So I finish off my stitch again. So if I pull my work apart, see how I have a stitch in here? And so now I'm going to look for that next little hole right there. So there's that next little hole. If I stick my hook straight through that hole, you'll actually come under those two bars. Because um, all we're doing is building single crochet stitches on top of single crochet stitches for each row. That's all we're going to be doing from now on. You know, knitting is, to me, is easier than a crocheting. Oh, really? It's so funny because I found over the years as a teacher that crochet is easier than knitting. Oh. But, um, yeah, because, you know, with knitting, when people first learn how to get the loops through the loops, it's really hard with a straight needle as opposed to a hook. Um, so you have a hook. So your recording is going to be available? Yeah, I understand that it is available, yeah. Oh, great, because then I can uh, follow it again. Yes, it will be. I guess in some way knitting is a little easier because the stitches are easier to look at. I feel as if, you know, when you hold up things like this for beginners, this looks really complicated, like what the hell is going on? Whereas <laughs> with knitting... The loop, you can see the stitches like a lot easier. Yeah, but also with the crocheting, I find that you have to get the right threading of the yarn so that it's smooth, you know, and it's easy to manage as you're making uh, the stitches. I mean, you know, the crocheting. Yeah, I mean, you have to do that for knitting as well. It's always about getting that even tension with holding the yarn. That's, yeah. Yeah, that is really the biggest battle is getting your fabric smooth enough, so controlling the tension in the um, yarn. So I'm just going to continue with this row. See how there's that other little hole like right there? I'm just going to poke it right through there. That brings me under the previous single crochet stitch. Pull up my loop and then over and then through the two loops. There's, you can see my next little hole, it's right there. I'm going to stick the hook right through there. If I tilt it to look at the top of it, I've gone under both bars or the complete stitch. Of course, there's all these fancy things that you can do with um, crochet as well for those of you yeah. who are interested. What type of yarn is that? I mean, the brand. Uh, this is Brava Yarn from nitpicks.com. 
I can put the uh, link in the chat if you want. It's it's just a it's a really cheap acrylic yarn. It no, does it actually it it does actually split crop quite easily, and sometimes it's a little bit tricky for beginners because the <gasps> um, the little pictures update. Sort of Yes. I think I got it. Oh. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but. <laughs> see? A little bit. Repetition is key. Hold on. Let me come back around exactly. so I can see better. Let's see, Gavin. A little bit. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. You've made like a couple of chain. Things exactly. So oh, my God. It, it's a Christmas <laughs> miracle, y'all. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I know. Thank you. This is a skill that I'll keep on giving. Oh, my gosh. Okay, oh, you'll yeah. Be to, you'll be able to show your boyfriend now. I know, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. Uh, I have to call, make some calls. But can you please, so that way I can follow it again, uh, you know, once the recording is available. Yeah, I'll follow up. Okay. Thank you so um, much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. I learned a lot just uh, watching. Yeah. <laughs> and it gives me inspiration to do my, to, yes, exactly. Yeah. That, that's where I am. But it's not as pretty like, like that. It's, it's more, uh, it has a lot more holes. It's, it's very uneven. <laughs> my, yeah, mine too. That's why I'm going to do it over again. And this time I'm going to do it with a lighter color. Ah, yeah. yes. I just, I just want to show you one thing. So uh, I've actually completed like a second round. And when you get here, this is the right side of the fabric. If you push it in from the back, this, if, and if you just keep making one stitch into every stitch, the fabric doesn't have any choice but to start forming like a bag sort of vestal shape. So this will fold in. Again, this is the right side, the direction we're working in. If you push it in from the back, it will start to form like a little pocket. Oh, and nice. It will, and it will actually... Um, yeah, that's, see, that's so pretty. All, all this bag is, is one stitch in every stitch. And if you just keep doing that, it has no choice but to actually build a little vessel, little bag shape like this. Yeah, I like that color. Is that orange? Yeah, that's yeah, so like pretty. Orange yeah. color. Very inspiring. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks all for joining. Let me know if you have any questions and I will uh, I will send this video out so that everybody has it, okay? Thank you so Thank much. You guys. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.